The moment of inertia, I, is the scalar quantity that is measured in kilogram meter squared. For a point mass, I equals mR squared, where m is the mass and r is the distance from the mass to the axis about which it is spinning. When this mass is spun about the z-axis, this is the perpendicular distance between the mass and the axis. When this differential piece of mass is instead spun about the y-axis, then this is the perpendicular distance between the mass and the axis about which it's spinning. Since the moment of inertia is a scalar, it adds as a scalar. For a collection of n point masses, the moment of inertia would be found by summing over mr squared for each of the n masses. When the number of particles goes to infinity and the mass becomes differential in size, these sums always go to integrals. To find the moment of inertia of an extended object, we integrate the perpendicular distance squared across the mass dm. In one dimension, we find the moment of inertia by integrating x squared dm, but dm equals lambda dx, so we integrate x squared lambda dx, where the linear mass density lambda of x has units of kilograms per meter. For example, this bar has length L, mass m, and constant mass density lambda equals m over L, and is being spun about one end. We put the x-axis along the bar with x equals zero at one end and x equal L at the other end of the bar. A differential piece of mass, dm, is the distance x from the spin axis. The moment of inertia of this bar is i equals the integral of x squared dm, or replacing dm with lambda dx. We integrate x squared lambda from zero to L, but lambda is a constant and comes out of the integral sign. Now we integrate x squared from zero to L. We get lambda times L cubed over three, but lambda is m over L, so we get one-third ml squared as the moment of inertia of a bar being spun about its end. If the bar is spun instead about its center, then we integrate from minus L over two to plus L over two and get one-twelfth ml squared. You can tell with your own muscles that it's easier to spin a bar about its center than it is about its end. The same result can be found by integrating from x equals zero to L over two and then doubling the result. If the bar is spun about its end and its linear mass density lambda of x equals bx squared, where b equal constant, then its total mass is found by adding up all the little pieces of mass dm that vary in magnitude. We have the total mass m equals the integral of little dm but dm is lambda dx, which we integrate from zero to L. Putting lambda equal to bx squared, and then integrating, we get b over three L cubed, which gives b equals three m over L cubed. Its moment of inertia is found from the integration of x squared dm, or x squared lambda dx, from zero to L. But lambda is bx to the fourth, so the integration gives b over five l to the fifth. Substituting back in b equals three m over l cubed, we find that the moment of inertia is i equals three fifths m l squared. The moment of inertia of an object depends whether the object is being spun about the x, y, or z axis. The moment of inertia about every possible axis is written as a matrix or tensor. For a continuous mass distribution, the moment of inertia is I equals the integral of R perpendicular squared dm. Objects are one, two, or three dimensional and may have the shape of a line, arc, flat plate, flat pie, block, cylinder, or sphere. Depending on the geometry, this differential mass dm becomes one of these, so we keep this list handy. In one dimension, the standard symbol for the linear mass density is lambda, given in kilograms per meter. In two dimensions, we use density sigma in kilograms per square meter. And in three dimensions, 
The mass density is rho in kilograms per cubic meter. In one dimension, the differential mass is dm equals lambda dx. For an arc of constant radius and length s equal theta r, we have ds equals r d theta, which makes the differential mass dm equals lambda r d theta. In two dimensions, dm equals sigma dA, and in rectangular coordinates, the differential area dA equals dx times dy. In cylindrical coordinate, the differential area dA equals r dr d theta. If sigma does not depend on theta, then the differential mass equals sigma times a differential area that is 2 pi r dr. In three dimensions, the differential mass is rho dv, where dv is a differential volume. For a block-shaped object, we use rectangular coordinates and the differential volume dv equals dx times dy times dz. In a cylindrically shaped object, the differential volume is r dr dz d theta. For a spherically shaped mass distribution, a differential volume is r squared sine theta d theta dr d phi. Depending on the geometry, this differential mass, dm, is replaced by one of these, and then the moment of inertia integration becomes one of these. Let's obtain the moment of inertia of a disk having mass m, radius r, and a constant mass density sigma equals mass over area equals m over pi r squared. The disk is spun about the z-axis. The top view shows the little mass element dm. r perpendicular is the same thing as r in the cylindrical coordinate system. This circle has radius little r, area equals pi little r squared, and differential area 2 pi r, which is the circumference, times the thickness dr but dm is sigma dA equals sigma 2 pi r dr. The moment of inertia of the disk is I equals the integral of r squared dm equals the integral of 2 pi sigma r cubed dr, where we integrate from little r equals zero to big R, and we get 2 pi sigma big R to the fourth over four, and substituting back sigma equal m over pi big R squared, we get one-half m r squared for the moment of inertia of this disk spinning about its central axis. A disk of radius big R has mass density sigma equals b little r cubed theta squared, where b equals constant. In the cylindrical coordinate system, we use dm equals sigma r dr d theta. The total mass of the disk Big M is obtained by adding all the little masses dm, the variant magnitude, equals the integral of sigma dA. We integrate theta from 0 to 2 pi. We integrate little r from 0 to big R. And the integrand is b r to the fourth theta squared dr d theta. Doing the r portion first, we integrate little r to the fourth from zero to big R and get r to the fifth over five. Next, we integrate theta squared from zero to two pi and we get two pi cubed over three. So the total mass m of the disk is two pi cubed b big R to the fifth over 15. This makes b equals 15m over 2 pi cubed big R to the fifth. The double integral just means that we integrate over one variable first, which produces constants, and then integrate over the other variable. The R integration was done first, but the order of integration does not matter if the integrand is smooth and continuous, as they always are in nature. The moment of inertia about its central axis which is the z-axis here, is given by i equals the integral of r squared dm equals integration over little r from 0 to big R and the integration of theta from 0 to 2 pi of br to the 6th theta squared 
dr d theta. Integrating the theta portion first gives 2 pi cubed over 3. And then integrating the r portion after substituting the value of b, we get 15 m r squared over 21. What is the moment of inertia of a sphere of mass m radius r volume v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed and constant mass density rho equals m over v equals 3m over 4 pi r cubed. We'll use spherical coordinates r, theta, and phi. The origin is placed at the center of the sphere. Here's the mass element dm. Coordinate r is the distance from the origin to the mass point. Coordinate theta is the angle between r and the z-axis. The yellow line is projected down into the xy plane, and then the coordinate phi is measured from the plus x-axis to the blue line. To cover all space, coordinate phi varies from 0 to 2 pi, but coordinate theta goes from 0 to pi. The sphere is spinning about its central axis, which is the z-axis. The perpendicular distance from the mass point to the axis about which it's spinning is given by r sine theta. The differential mass element dm equals rho dv equals rho r squared sine theta d theta dr d phi. We integrate little r from 0 to big R. We integrate theta from 0 to pi. And we integrate phi from 0 to 2 pi. The integration of sine cubed gives 4 thirds. And after combining constants, we get the moment of inertia of the sphere spinning about its own central axis is 2 fifths m r squared. Let's find the moment of inertia of this paraboloid when spinning about its central axis. It has height h, maximum radius capital R, and this shape y of x equals bx squared, where b is a constant. The radius of the object is given by little r equals x equals the square root of y over b. The moment of inertia of a disk is i equals one half m r squared. We let i be differential in size di, and mass m be differential in size dm equals rho dv equals density times area times differential thickness dy. The area of a disk is pi little r squared, which is pi times y over b. So we have di equals one half little r squared dm, but r squared is y over b, and dm is rho pi y over b dy. The total moment of inertia of the paraboloid comes from adding all the little di's that vary in magnitude. We're integrating y squared from 0 to h, and we get rho pi h cubed divided by 6b squared. The object has maximum radius big R at y equal h. At that point, x equals the square root of y over b, but y equals h, so that's the square root of h over b equals big R, or big R squared equals h over b. The total mass of the object is big M, which is obtained from adding up all the little masses dm that vary in magnitude, and we get one half rho pi h squared over b. In terms of this mass and maximum radius, the moment of inertia is one third m r squared for this paraboloid spinning about its central axis. What is the moment of inertia of a cone spun about its central axis, which is the z-axis here? The cone has mass big M, maximum radius big R, height h, and volume V equals one-third pi r squared h. In the z-direction, the cone consists of disk of radius little r equals big R z over h. We have little r equals zero when z equals zero, and we have little r equals big R when z equals h. The differential disk has moment of inertia di equals one-half little r squared dm, 
where dm equals rho dv. In cylindrical coordinates, the differential volume is dv equals little r dr d theta dz, which becomes dv equals 2 pi r dr dz after integrating theta from 0 to 2 pi. We then have the moment of inertia i is the integral of r squared dm equals an integral of r squared rho dv. Using dv in cylindrical coordinates, we integrate little r from 0 to z times big R over h, and we integrate z from 0 to h. In the r integration, we have r cubed dr. We get i equals rho pi big R to the fourth h over 10, with a constant mass density rho equals big M over the total volume V, we get the moment of inertia I equals 3 tenths M R squared. A sheet of material lies in the XY plane, or two-dimensional thin plates of random shape being spun about the Y axis, we have I sub Y equals the integral of X squared dm. When the sheet is spun about the x-axis, we have i sub x equals the integral of y squared dm. Or when it's spun about the z-axis, we have i sub z equals the integral of r squared dm, but r squared is x squared plus y squared. i z can be written as i x plus i y. That is the perpendicular axis theorem for a sheet of material lying in the xy plane and spinning about the z axis. In the parallel axis theorem, the x prime y prime coordinate system has been shifted by distance h from the origin of the xy coordinate system. So it is located at x equal a, y equal b in the xy frame. In the n prime frame, the mass element is at the xy location. In the prime frame, its coordinates are x minus a and y minus b. The moment of inertia i equals the integral of r squared dm can be written as an integral of x minus a squared plus y minus b squared dm, or the integral of x squared plus y squared dm plus a squared plus b squared multiplied by the integral dm minus 2a times the integral of x dm minus 2b times the integral y dm, which is icm plus mh squared, since h squared equals a squared plus b squared. The integral of dm equals m. The integral of x dm is the total mass big M times x cm. And the integral of y dm is the total mass big M times the y coordinate of the center of mass. We choose to put the xy coordinate system at the center of mass, then x cm and y cm are both zero. In the resulting parallel axis theorem, the moment of inertia i of an object being spun about a non central axis is related to the moment of inertia about the center of mass. ICM. The parallel axis theorem is I equals ICM plus MH squared, where H is the distance from the center of mass to the axis of revolution. For example, a sphere spun about its central axis has ICM equals two-fifths MR squared, and when spun about the axis shown, it has I equals ICM plus MH squared equals two-fifths MR squared plus mh squared. ICM is the moment of inertia of the object when spun about its center of mass. When the object spins about another axis that is parallel to the central axis, then the moment of inertia I equals ICM plus mh squared.